Hi everyone, and welcome to the PEGX Podcast. We cover a wide range of topics in these podcasts, including environmental issues, technology tips to help you grow your business, and tips to keep you out of trouble with the EPA, DOT, OSHA, and others. My name is Dan Chamberlain. Today we're talking about the challenges you face in filing your mandatory biannual report with the EPA, which looms ahead in 2020, and what you should be doing now to prepare for it. Every two years, the EPA requires large quantity of hazardous waste generators, also known as LQGs, to report the nature, quantities, and disposition of hazardous waste they generate. A form filling exercise with the uncharacteristically straightforward moniker biannual report. But lest you become overconfident in your command of EPA nomenclature, known that the form is also affectionately referred to as the hazardous waste report, except when it's called by its alphanumeric nickname, 8700-13A-B. Anyway, whatever you call it, the good old 8700 must be submitted to your authorized state agency and EPA regional office by March 1st of every even numbered year. That might seem like a ways away now, but remember that what you'll be reporting to the authorities in 2020 are your hazmat goings on that happened and are happening in 2019 from January through December inclusive. That means you'll have a scant 60 days after the close of business on New Year's Eve to gather that data for your mandatory confession to the EPA. And so your future self would really appreciate you doing some preparation now to make things easier later. By the way, check below for the links to the form you need. Now, who has to file? Biannual reporting is required only if you're a large quantity generator, meaning you generate 2,200 pounds or more of hazardous waste per month. The EPA would also love to hear from you if you're operating a treatment storage or disposal facility, also known as a TSDF. And be careful. The EPA considers you to be an LQG even if you've only once and incidentally generated 2,200 pounds or more of hazardous waste in a single month during 2019. For example, say you generated 40 barrels of goo from your facility during a a once-in-a-decade cleanup project. At 55 gallons per barrel, you've achieved 2,200 pounds. And if said goo is considered a listed or characteristic waste, by the EPA, congratulations, you're an LQG and need to file. If this happens to you, then you're going to need an EPA ID identification number, which generally speaking can be obtained by filing the EPA form 8700-12, also known as Notification of Regulated Waste Activity. Filling this little form out for the first time can be a daunting task. So scare up some hazmat experts, that would be us. So who doesn't have to file? Maybe you. Or maybe not. As in all things involving the EPA, expert advice is crucial. But generally speaking, you don't have to file the biannual report if, and I say if, you are a small quantity generator, or also known as an SQG, producing more than 220 pounds, or 100 kilograms, but less than 2,200 pounds, or 1,000 kilograms, of hazardous waste monthly. Or you're a very small quantity generator, also known as VSQG, producing 220 pounds, 100 kilograms, or less of hazardous waste monthly. But be advised that state agency often have more stringent reporting requirements, for example. Some states require annual as opposed to biannual reports, 25 of them as an example. Notification of regulated waste activity might require state-specific paperwork in lieu of federal forms. Time intervals between required accumulations might be tighter. Also, federal restrictions are much more stringent for acutely hazardous waste, the kind that will cause death, disabling personal injury, serious illness, or otherwise entirely ruin your day. What needs to be reported? Along with the user requirements for such standard info as your EPID and the name and address of your facility, the EPA wants to know the quantity of hazardous waste you've sent to each TSDF as we spoke of earlier. During 2019, as well as the name, address, and EPIDs of those TSDFs, the name and EPID of the transporters you'd use to get it there, and a description of the hazardous waste by EPA hazardous waste number. But wait, there's more. Somewhat ominously, you're beholding to describe to your functionary friends at the EPA what efforts you've undertaken during 2019 to reduce the volume of toxicity of the hazardous waste you generate, any changes in hazardous waste volume and toxicity you've achieved during the year in comparison to previous years. 
Your buy-in report needs to be certified, i.e. signed by you or your authorized representative. An authorized representative is a person responsible for the overall operation of your site, an example, plant manager or superintendent, or a person of equal responsibility. Some notes on bookkeeping. Your buy-in report must be archived and remain available for three years after the due date, but you don't necessarily need to have it on site. It can be at your corporate headquarters, far away from any hazardous waste, or maybe in your sock drawer, just so long as you're able to provide the EPA with information on or access to these records upon demand. So maybe the sock drawer isn't ideal. Your biannual report needs to be accompanied by another form called the Site Identification Form or Site ID. You can file the Site ID electronically, but you do so by contacting your regional authority which might be an EPA district office, but the chances are pretty good that it's something with a name like Alabama Department of Environmental Management. The site ID must also bear the autograph of someone in your organization legally considered an owner, operator, or in the case of an authorized representative, a plant manager, or a superintendent, or a person of equal responsibility. How can you make this easier? There's required paperwork that's fairly common across different kinds of businesses that generate hazardous waste and that you're supposed to have on file for viewing on demand by the EPA. If these are up to date, they can be harvested for much of the information you'll be asked for in your biannual report. Three of the most usefuls are records of waste determination. You must document how you identified something as hazardous waste and what danger it possesses. Just as importantly, you should document how you identified something as not being hazardous waste in the event you're challenged about it. Such records must also be easily accessible and retained for three years subsequent to the last treatment storage or disposal of material. Hazardous waste manifests, these are integral to most hazardous waste inspections. As hazardous waste generators, you must keep a copy of the manifest signed by the transporter a confirmation copy of the manifest with the TSDF signature must also be kept on file after the waste is accepted by the transporter. Both must be retained and accessible for three years. Land disposal restriction documentation. Certain determination and notification records must be kept on site for three years, subsequent to your shipping hazardous waste off site to be treated before disposal. And finally, which states require annual instead of biannual reports? As of this writing, precisely half of them, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Delaware, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, New Hampshire, New York, Oklahoma, Oregon, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, and Wisconsin. If you have questions, we have answers. Get advice from the experts at PEGX. Find us online at pegx.com or call us at 888-681-9616. Thanks for listening. We hope you found this information useful. If you have any idea for a topic you'd like for us to cover, drop us a line at podcast at pegx.com. Thank you.